The first part of my uh, reflection dedicated to um, Baruch Spinoza uh, was uh, a little bit anecdotical, perhaps not so seriously philosophical, but I think it's, it's very important to, to realize that, as in case, uh, as you remember already, of Socrates, it's um, very important to connect his ideas with his life, with his uh, destiny, with uh, the way how he was treated by the political authority of us, and the fact that he was um, killed and uh, was condemned as a, a negative figure uh, who was uh, judged uh, because of his uh, deprivation of youth. I mean, this is very important that, that we are not following or studying his ideas only abstract entities, but sometimes which uh, really should have an impact on our life. And the same in the case of Spinoza. It was uh, someone who was uh, very um, consciously developing his ideas. He was um, all the time uh, aware of conflict, of growing tension between his Jewish community, between uh, even political um, author a religious authority, Christian authority in, in, in Netherlands, in Amsterdam in 17th century because of his ideas, but he knowing that, uh, uh, that the authority is not accepting his ideas, he's convinced that he is right, that his ideas are correct that is necessary to follow his inner development. And I think this is also a kind of uh, testimony of someone who is paying a price for his uh, ideas. And now we, we, I will come back to, to the main topic, namely um, theological political treatise uh, published uh, in uh, 1670 anonymously because he was afraid that if he will put his name immediately he will be put in prison, uh, will be persecuted, etc., etc. So he was aware that his ideas are revolutionary. Uh, he was uh, popular, he is some we have many letters of him, exchange of letters with scholars, philosophers of his time. He met even in Leibniz, very influential uh, philosopher of the time. Uh, he got offered to teach philosophy in Germany, but he, in Heidelberg, but he rejected it. Because he wanted to, to, to live in peace, he worked uh, not as a teacher, but he gained his life uh, being a worker. He, he, he worked uh, in, in a very simple life, uh, on, just to, to, to conserve his, his inner peace. But nevertheless, knowing the consequences, he published his work. And you know how it was judged by contemporaries, particularly by pious uh, Christians. They said that, it, um, that uh, this work was forged in hell uh, by a renegade Jew and devil. You know, heretic Jew, and devil wrote this work. It was considered as, as extremely offensive, as, as extremely dangerous. And why Spinoza, we know, was a very peaceful man who was avoiding conflicts, who was willing to share his ideas, but only with those who were willing to listen to him. Why he was judged so um, severely, so violently, etc. We will see uh, in the moment uh, why it was so. 
But I would like also to draw your attention to reception of his ideas, because uh, we are studying his thought in 21st century, so 300 and more years ago, when they were written, and they are already translated in all possible languages. He is still now alive, is important also for people who want to understand the dynamic of the relationship between uh, philosophical ideas and politics. What, what was so uh, dangerous in, in, uh, in uh, Spinoza's uh, words that um, Jewish authority, as we know, he was rejected, he was condemned, uh, excluded from Jewish community with this awful excommunication, Jewish uh, excommunication harem, that nobody should uh, contact him, people should avoid him, even his family, etc., etc. Uh, but also uh, Christians and all denominations were uh, afraid of him. Uh, put his index uh, of it was forbidden the war. The, well, if we have a closer look, which we will do in, in short time, I think you will discover why he was so um, uh, hated by his opponents or his enemies. But I would like to mention also one Polish uh, uh, philosopher who was uh, extremely interested in, in, um, in Spinoza's uh, work, uh, namely uh, Leszek Kowakowski, uh, who, as you know, he was uh, as a young man, as a student and young uh, teacher at our Warsaw University, was known, uh, first of all, as a, as a very brilliant uh, uh, Marxist, a philosopher who took Marxist um, philosophy as his way of philosophizing. Uh, but uh, Kowakowski wrote his PhD not on Marx, not on Engels, not on Lenin, but on Spinoza. And he published a very interesting book on him. Uh, he also uh, helped to publish uh, his most important books, uh, Letters uh, into Polish, in the famous uh, Library of Classics of Philosophy. Um, and what is also important that for entire life Kowakowski was returning to, to Spinoza is that uh, he um, republished uh, his uh, book on Spinoza just before he passed away in 2008. So really, it's something in, in his philosophy. Uh, but uh, let us uh, have a closer uh, look at, at uh, his um, uh, theological political treatise. Uh, now it will be a boring, uh, close reading is never exciting, um, but in order to give you a, a, a taste of his style, I will read you passages from a preface, from introduction to this uh, theological political treatise, and perhaps you will understand why he was so violently rejected. Um, so first of all, uh, he was writing uh, not uh, very abstract uh, uh, philosophy, but his philosophy was, was based on observation, what was going on around him. And he, you know, in 1670, um, it was the time uh, when uh, in Europe uh, they were very violent uh, uh, religious wars, 30 years war between different confessions, uh, 200 years war between um, Spain and, and, and uh, Great Britain, etc., etc. So it was a very confused time. And Spinoza was like looking around and saying, why 
which reasons are behind? Why the people are fighting so violently? And he discovered these reasons. They have false ideas about religion. They have false ideas about state, about politics, about the, um, the, the, the role and place of rulers. And I think this is, is his very clear definition of what it means to be a monarch, what it means to be a political re uh, leader, what it means to be a religious leader. This was very precisely defined by him and all political leaders, religious leaders, considered his observations as offensive for them. And this was, uh, I think, one of the reasons why they hated him, why they rejected his ideas. But I will read a little bit. Uh, so in preface, um, he, he, he wrote like this. As soon as uh, this abuse began in the church, the worst kind of people came forward to fill the sacred offices and the impulse to spread God's religion degenerated into sordid greed and ambition. To so, you know, his accusation of religiosity of his time as not based on uh, real religious values, but greed, ambitions, etc., etc. And uh, following him to make the mysteries appear more impressive in Theologians also utilized um, the speculation of the Aristotelians and Platonists and as they did not wish to appear to be following pagans, they adopted the scriptures to them. In this way, faith has become identical, holds Spinoza with credulity and prejudices and religion use ridiculous mysteries and those who totally condemned reason and reject and revile the understanding as corrupt by nature are believed without a doubt to possess a divine light which is the most in iniquitous aspect of all if you listen attentively, what you hear here, that the people who adopted uh, old philosophy, ancient Greek philosophy, and use it only to, to spread their own religious ideas are not honest intellectually. They are not using their reason, but they are using ideas of others to force on others their own ideas. He said it's the wrong way. We need to be free in our thinking. We have to reject all dogmas, creeds, which are not corresponding to reason, to rational reasoning. And I think it was very offensive for those who were proud of to have a a series of dogmas, of creeds, were fighting against one another. And this is also between uh, Jews and Christians. They were uh, convinced, his teachers also, that the most important are uh, being a Lutheran, Calvinist, or follower of, of uh, Talmudic, uh, Talmudic um, scholars, etc. So you are not using, in other words, this is the, the, the most important criticism of Spinoza, uh, that you are not free in using your mind, but you are following others. And you are fighting because you consider your authority bigger than other. And the, the, how it is connected with, with, with politics? Well, and I will not read more, you can do this for yourselves, uh, uh, for Spinoza to be 
a mature person, you have to, and as a politician, you have to guarantee to create the space where everybody could feel in developing his or her ideas. This is the basic thought uh, behind the treaties, uh, theological political treaties. And in the last part, I will say more about what we can and what we should do with Spinoza's ideas.